What's up guys, it's Track. I am so gosh darn tired of fixing Hasbro's mistakes. So at this point, it's pretty uh, known information that the Ultra line is an Ultra Flop. However, out of all the ones that we've seen so far, and again, that's where some of the confusion comes in. The Ultra 1, unequivocally bad. The Ultra 4, very simple, but uh, slightly more permissible. And then the Ultra 5, uh, thus far, was not that bad other than just the utilization of the ammo and the disingenuous marketing. Uh, this is the one that I was the most excited for because this is a Magnus, this is a Night Finder, the uh, Ultra 1 was an incisor, the Ultra 3 is a mystery. At this point, I'm starting to feel like the kid in college who found a bunch of goats and they had spray painted on them 1, 2, and 5. Uh, like, where are the other two goats? Um, but uh, we don't know what the Ultra 3 is about. We do know that it's going to cost $30. So coming in at 25 bucks, this auto revolver is easily the most interesting because there isn't really a, a comparable blaster for it. It is a rear loading, uh, very auto revolver-esque sort of uh, revolver type blaster. And I think that it could fit very firmly into the pseudo primary category. That rear loading is of course a modification we've done in the past that's being installed kind of factory this ways. And uh, they're available right now on walmart.com. If you're willing to pay 25 bucks for them, uh, description box down below, uh, you're welcome to throw away the same amount of money that I have. Now, the community is already hard at work making these into a more viable 50 cal thing, but Right now, we are here to make you the most informed purchaser that we possibly can. And to that end, we are going to take this thing, uh, unbox it in its stock form, load it up with the default batteries, and see exactly what kind of power we can squeeze out of it. Uh, we're gonna put it over a chronograph, we're gonna examine it for ergonomics, and we're gonna go over some of the issues that have already started uh, popping up. Let's do it. Out of the box, you get the blaster itself, only six ultra darts, just enough to load it fully once, uh, including the one that's in the packaging, and then a set of instructions that you're probably never gonna read. The blaster does require six AA batteries, which are not provided. Taking a look at the box itself, all we really have to parse over here is that it's a pretty good image of the blaster, no actors on the packaging, uh, telling you that you need six double A's, telling you that you get six darts. Uh, one of those darts is of course photoed up here. Why they're proud of that is beyond me. On the back, we're claiming our egregious lie of 120 feet. I'm actually really surprised that while uh, peering over the entire box, there's no mention of the number one blaster brand uh, on the planet. Uh, so we're willing to redact some things that might be a little bombastic, but uh, we're not willing to redact the ones that are actually just mathematically fallacious. So, uh, box is done, blaster in hand. So let's talk about ergonomics really quick. Overall, the blaster is actually quite handsome. I think it has the best shell design out of any of the Ultra Blasters, bar none. Uh, as per usual, we have great paintwork on one side, including a gold logo, and on the other side, we have straight uh, laziness because it was worth saving a couple cents a shell. Um, that's a little unfortunate because again, I do think that this is handsome. I do like these kind of Razorback-esque kind of lines here. I even like the two on this one and its placement. I like the, the difference in texturing uh, on the white, kind of giving it a matte and a gloss appearance depending upon how you're holding it in the light. I think that it's quite good. And then on the other side, bleak, disappointing, failure. Um, that said, uh, the balance is quite good. It feels good right now. Now the batteries are gonna go behind the failure logo, uh, so those are gonna go up top and that's definitely going to tilt the weight forward a little bit further. Uh, the only other complaint that I have is that the rev trigger is fine, the trigger trigger is fine, the DRM already feels kind of crunchy, but as far as the actual articulation of this cylinder goes, it actually feels quite nice. It feels very snappy, very well molded. Now, the rear loading should be quite smooth, and it is, given that these are really ideal uh, for no blaster, they're much better uh, in flywheels because they're just so bad for springer barrel fit uh, being made of this polypropylene foam. So uh, rotating through is smooth. When it's not engaged, it rotates freely. And then you can fit all six here uh, back. Now, a lot of people have talked about alignment issues in their Ultra 2, and my flywheels seem to be aligned pretty well down through the barrel, but they both seem to be about three or four thou off of center. So that's definitely going to have an impact on performance. I've seen wonky this way, wonky that way. We've done a lot of uh, very interesting sort of photography as we're going through this first batch from Walmart, trying to figure out if any of them are actually correct, and they all seem to be just a little bit off due to, I'm assuming, how the cage has been installed. On top of that, you've got a tactical rail up top, which I think in a revolver like this could actually be quite cool to put like sort of a pinpoint sight on top of. I think that that could look very handsome. Then you have uh, two kind of sort of three different options in terms of your uh, your sling point attachment. You've got one here, one here, and then one up here. This actually is the only Ultra Blaster so far that I think is 
worthy of creating a holster for because don't you just want to live out your uh, your six slinger fantasies with something this cool and kind of sci-fi futuristic then on the other side we have a relatively well uh, embedded flap here this lets you access those flywheels uh, take a look at the the kind of spacing in there as well as the overall geometry they are slightly uh, concave um, which should lend to better accuracy but we know uh, from the ultra one that shooting ultra darts period uh, lends itself to very low accuracy sorts of situations. Other than that, we've got an iron sight that looks pretty decent, uh, all things considered, if you don't want to go the pinpoint sight route. And then unfortunately, it falls apart here in the handle. While the triggers are responsive and clicky, the overall grip is too small for an adult-sized hand. You've got a trigger well that's a little bit tight, but not that bad. Then here, then here, then unfortunately, this sort of a uh, choil that comes out uh, forces your pinky up into the rest of your fingers and is uh, just completely unnecessary. If this had rounded back and around, I think that it would have been fine, but um, the grip is a little bit uh, cramped. Other than that, let's throw some uh, fresh uh, six AA batteries in here, which definitely elevates the price point on this a little bit, especially considering that you're paying 50 cents a dart and you only have enough to load it once. Uh, we will go ahead and take it outside fully loaded, uh, freshly charged up, and put them over the chronograph for you. A delightfully dreary and overcast day in Georgia, but Jinx seems to be enjoying the weather. So out here we are, and with our trusty chronograph to give you the numbers that for some reason are so important uh, when the ranges don't seem to line up. However, uh, we're hoping that this breaks somewhere close to 100 FPS. Let's go ahead and put a few over the chronograph and see what we... Ooh, that's interesting. So... Uh, a pretty slow rev up on these, and we know uh, from our sister-in-law over at Foam Blast that the uh, the motors are not quite as robust as we're used to in the hobby. So the uh, full spin-up time here is probably close to two seconds. So if you're willing to wait, and hopefully the drop between shots isn't quite that bad, uh, you're going to get FPSs like 77, 79, 94. 105 something and then 98 so uh, a little all over the place again my flywheels aren't perfectly aligned out of the package but uh what really matters is what kind of ranges this is putting through um and it seems to be uh mine's firing pretty smoothly i've heard some issues where the uh the cylinder doesn't rotate exactly each time because of the dart drm kind of post thing uh going on in here but Hopefully it maintains that and we have pretty consistent firing. That seems to be the number one fix that we need to do. So despite being fragile and snappy, the one advantage of the Ultra Ammo seems to be that it's a largely polystyrene design makes it pretty waterproof. So it doesn't seem to mind uh, that it's a little wet outside, which is actually quite nice. The overall uh, weight change on this definitely pulls it uh, further forward, but it's not that bad because the battery tray does have a double stack up top Which kind of pulls the weight a little bit further from being just completely uh, Tilting this way. However, uh, that grip being a little too small is killing me now that the blaster is a little bit heavier It feels like more of a two-handed kind of hand cannon, but I'm gonna be honest uh, Despite all of its flaws. I really really like this shell design and I can tell you already uh, Unequivocally, this is my favorite ultra blaster so far. I think that it's uh, easily the best one so far and that it is doing something somewhat unique and novel. So let's try and fire all six of these downrange as quickly as we can uh, because I really want to test that rotation mechanism. So, and you do get kind of clicky there because obviously without the DRM, uh, it's not going to fire properly. So, so rapid fire aside, let's get some ranges. What happened there? Okay, so with a spread betraying the accuracy issues inherent in this ammo, um, we look like we're getting about 60 feet. I do want to give you guys an up close of kind of how the DRM works and why this will only fire ultra darts, and then we'll talk about why that's bad. So obviously forcing people to buy 50 cent ammo to use your cool new hand cannon is not feel good for anybody. It's not good for the people buying birthday presents and it's definitely not good for uh, dedicated fans of foam toy blasters. That said, I think that this one is still a pickup because I have faith that we'll be able to fix it in the modification guide. These have very low potential in their uh, stock form to fire 50 cal ammo, but as it is the default inexpensive and best uh, ammo on the market, 
I think that with a little bit of cage tweaking and maybe some cylinder uh, modifications, we'll be able to get it uh, into something that's really sweet, really cool. Do not pick up one of these unless you're planning on modifying it, but uh, I think that this one has the most potential of any Ultra Blaster so far. And if you want to see the guts, if you want to see what's inside and what makes it tick and how to make it better for the purposes of firing Ultra Darts, while I would normally be doing that live stream on my Twitch channel, just as kind of a fun experiment, I want to see how it'll go over on YouTube. I've never used YouTube streaming platform, so come back here, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday, uh, and we'll, we'll check it out. Same drag time, same drag place, but... Uh, I think that the innards of this should be very interesting. I want to know more about the cylinder and why it's really good for me and not so good for others. Uh, I want to be able to figure out if there's a way to tweak that flywheel alignment and maybe bring them to bear. Uh, and then most importantly, we've got to get rid of this DRM so that we can fire uh, realistically anything, including uh, homemade ultra darts, uh, which are picking up some steam. There's a, a lot to be excited about for this blaster if you're willing to forgive uh, the ultra's shortcomings in general. So. Uh, taking this thing apart tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will see you guys there. Much love, Nerf on Drek out.